Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to Fresh Fit Podcast. We're here. Sorry we're late, but uh, we had to get some stuff going. Uh, but we got a great show. We're here with Roger, my real estate agent, and we're going to talk about real estate. Let's go. Let's get into it. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to Fresh Fit Podcast, man. So it's Money Monday. Sorry, guys. We apologize for delay. Some quick updates. Um, so we, we got a live. new mixer. Yeah, we do a live, bro, for real. Uh, guys, we got a new mixer, right? Uh, a new joint, and we just figured it out just now. <laughs> yeah, Trey, Trey how to get it to work, this. bro? Like Trey, Trey's in the back, Tough. sweating like R. Kelly at a playground <laughs> in 1999, bro. It is crazy. You know what I'm saying? But we figured it out. Shout out to Pastor Trey in the back right now. He got it. He got it figured out. We got the new board, 32 channels, so we're going to be able to like host a whole bunch of people. And uh, Studio A is, uh, or sorry, Studio B, this is the second ha half of the studio, is almost done, guys. Uh, I just got to get, I'm waiting on some mics, a couple of wires, and uh, it's going to be litty, bro. We're going to have basically another whole setup over there, you know, in case we want to do something over there, or it'll be the spectator area when we have guests. So, um, yeah, man. Oh, and then blue pants for the <laughs> blue pants for the blue check. Yeah, yeah I man. got verified on Instagram, guys. Follow me, unplug fit you got on there. Verified on Instagram, man. You know, I'm gonna be more active on there. You know, I do uh, a Q and A every uh, Sunday, but I'm gonna start going live more. Fresh has been yelling at me to, for the past few days. Oh, bro, go, go live, live man. man. It helps your engagement. Yeah, it helps with the engagement. And honestly, I got to get up to 100k followers because uh, <laughs> there's some things that I got to get done. And also, I fixed the internet, so we should be going really fast right now. Shouldn't have any lag issues. Uh, but yeah, man, today we got a good episode for you guys. This one's going to be short and sweet. Oh, we're Viking Paradigm. Shout out to him. This is my internet guy right here, guys, by yep. the way. Check him out. Shout out to Viking. Miles working on more studio upgrades today, so they will start once they're fairly sure they got it all working, which is Thanks. exactly what it is. Thank you, Viking, for understanding, bro. Shout out to him. He's the guy that helps us with the internet, bro. Anytime the shit starts messing up, I basically call, do oh! I need your help, bro. And then, yeah. uh, like, you all right, Martin, let's yeah. go. He yeah. Shows, he and he helps me up, out. Man, so, so shout out to him. So he got his back up to almost 600 on the, uh, on the uh, I think, download? To download, Chris? Yeah. Uh, um, computer. Uh, it's uh, uh, stupid. Yeah, download, not upload. Okay, yeah, upload. What, or, no, no, download, not okay. upload. Whatever. It is what it is. I don't know what I'm talking about when it comes to the internet. But I just listen to what he says, and I just set it up, and we're good. So um, with that said, guys, uh, thank you for being patient with us. But we got a good episode today. So as you guys know, we'll get right into it. Uh, I closed on a triplex. What was it, last week? We closed on it oh, last actually, Monday? last Monday, yeah. Last Monday, we closed on yep. it. So uh, I want to walk you guys through how we found this deal, and we got... My fucking real estate agent in the house, man, Roger. Oh. And like, only thing I'll say, <laughs> patreon.com slash fresh Get on there, guys. You know, that will be the only shameless plug we do. Um, Roger, can you introduce yourself to the people, man? Hey, in case guys. they don't remember I'm you. Roger, real estate agent, work in the Fort Lauderdale Urban Core, Miami Urban Core. Uh, mainly work with investors. Been doing this since 2016. But prior to that, I was basically doing everything a real estate agent did, along with uh, my cousin Dom up in New York, where we were driving around and checking stuff out and doing real estate back since like the 90s. We just uh, took a while to figure out that we needed to make it official. So yeah, that's my background. Um, I met Myron through Fresh. I knew Fresh from back in the days when- Pick up uh, days. Yeah, exactly. When we were chasing women. <laughs> before, before Fresh became Fresh, when he was just Walter. Listen, man, we've been out here in the streets before this, man. So talk to him, man. He knows. Oh, he by knows by the way, facts. He was getting girls before the show people. Thank you, like, man. <laughs> Thank I you, brother. I started hanging out with him in 2016. My guy. Whatever. He right, knows. He whatever. knows. Cosign. You know, uh, Walt paid him a lot of money right before the show. To say I did, I did, guys. I, I witnessed ten G's. It. Yeah, I'm gonna get a, I'm gonna get a Cuban like Walt now. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so you've been in the real estate game for a minute, bro. Um, so I guess what we'll do, so um, so we'll walk you guys through it. So let, let's 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 take him down memory lane, bro. How did we? All right. How do we find this bad boy? How'd you find it? Because you're the one. So guys, just so you know, this is the way me and Roger work. So 
I go on Redfin and I look at properties, then he's also looking at properties too. He's looking at stuff off the market. I'm looking at things typically on the MLS because I don't have access like that. I'm not lit, uh, lit up like that yet. But I typically look in two areas. I look in Miami and I also look in uh, Connecticut, right? Southern Connecticut uh, for the, you know, for those that are wondering. And the reason why is because I know, well, number one, Miami's booming. Right, no, Miami. Absolutely. The market absolutely. down here is crazy. It's almost, uh, it's almost not, not good to get in right now. But I, hopefully, it'll it'll slow down. And then Southern Connecticut is because my folks are there; they can manage it. And then on top of that, Connecticut is is going up because all the New Yorkers, if you guys don't know, are trying to get the hell out. You know what I'm saying? Like New York is extremely expensive. Uh, the beer bug is pretty much like crippled the economy there, and a lot of people are just like, "Yo, if I'm going to pay five, ten thousand dollars a month to live in a in a in a shoebox." You know what I'm saying? This is BS. I'm going to move somewhere either cheaper, Connecticut, which is close by, or I'm going to just go down south where it's warm and I don't have to pay state, no, state income taxes, yep. et cetera, because the money goes further down here in Florida for those that are wondering. So <clears throat> so, uh, so I was scouring, you know, and he was scouring as well. And my goal, guys, when I well, just so you guys know, like how I look at real estate, I look at it purely for cash flow. I don't care about appreciation. I don't care about uh, living in it down the road or you know building up like a, you know a massive real estate portfolio just so I can like look cool or whatever like all I care is about cash on cash returns that's really all I care about right now that's the main metric that me and you look for um you know and that's not to knock anybody else you know guys that want to buy for appreciation purposes or guys that want to buy land to maybe build something on it you know there's so many different goals you know maybe you want to buy a vacation home to use it down the road or retire in that's there's nothing wrong with that but I think one of the most important things is kind of having a goal and knowing what you want for me I want monthly income that's pretty much almost always going to be uninterrupted. And that's why I'm like, you know, putting such a, a large amount of my earned income into real estate because cash flow is my main thing. Down the road, you know, will I get into other potential projects that don't strictly involve cash flow? Possibly. But for now, I have like a certain monthly income that I'm trying to hit goal uh, for the for the year, which is almost pretty much done. And then for next year, which Roger knows as well. But I think it's very important to identify what your goal is, what you're trying to do. And then every move that you make will be pretty much uh, done off of your goal. You know what I'm saying? So every when you have a when you have a goal, every action has a purpose. You know what I'm saying? When every action has a purpose, then you get a result. You know, hopefully a desired result. If you know what you're doing. So and that's why I bring Roger in because Roger definitely knows what he's doing. So I guess can you take him through real quick how you found this one? No, no, absolutely. So in addition to what Myron was saying, obviously cash flow is extremely important. In fact. I'm just going to quote Mr. Wonderful, Kevin O'Leary. If it does not cash flow, just say no. <laughs> In addition to cash flow, I'm also looking for properties that have a decent or reasonable chance of appreciation. Like the first property that I got you, it was positioned near- I'm looking um, at it right now. A mass transit stop. It was near a uh, development that was being completed as well as near the planned uh, development, another development within like a block distance mm -hmm. so it's pretty decent chance for appreciation and now in this one it's situated in a part of town where there's already development there's new office buildings a couple blocks away there's a massive shopping multi-family not not a shopping these are more office buildings mm -hmm. um actually one of the buildings was uh one of the i guess campuses or one of the buildings is, is linked to miami-dade college okay. Um, there's another office building that looks like it. retail on the bottom floor and then I guess office on the top floor. And then there's this huge apartment complex that's currently under construction as well as two recent apartment complexes. So these are all good signs that, and here's the thing, we took a huge risk on that one. So, so guys, just so you know, the first property I bought was, it was a duplex, right? Mm -hmm. The property appraised for 337 K. Which for you guys, appraisal basically means like, you know, some guy came in, looked at it. All right, this property is worth this much. And then the bank is going to only give you a loan based off of that. So if it appraises for less than what you go under contract for, you have to come with more money out of pocket Correct. to make the deal yeah. happen. You know what I'm saying? So the house appraised at 337, but we went under contract at 358K. Correct, yeah. So we actually overpaid on paper for the property. But the reason why we overpaid and we took a calculated risk me and Roger drove around. We we knew that uh, some New York investors were making a big uh, development there. With mm -hmm. uh, was it was it a, a commercial like mall uh, shopping center? It's a it, all right. So it's going to be a mixed use. It's going to be retail on the ground floor and then uh -huh. apartment complexes further up. Okay, 
And then we also saw that there was a train uh, station area, a tra- like a, uh, there's a train, a major a, train stop, mass transit yes. it goes into Miami. Miami being the major economic employment center. Yeah. So yeah, that that's another. And major it's an thing. it's a, an up up and coming area. It was in Northwest Miami, uh, a little a little south south um, southwest of Wynwood. Which for some of you guys that don't know, Wynwood is like the Williamsburg of Miami, like the Brooklyn of Miami. And that's going through crazy gentrification right now. You know what I'm saying? It used to be the hood, but now it's up and coming. So anywhere in that area, if you're buying now, is going to appreciate massively. So that property, guys, just so you guys know, and I pulled it up right here just to let you all know, we bought it for 358 So we overpaid by 20 k on paper. Now the property is worth four eighteen, for four hundred about $418,000. So it's appreciated significantly just since March. And the reason why is because what I told you guys before – is the New Yorkers, the Californians, every everyone that's from like expensive states is pretty much coming to Florida because there's, there's no state income tax. Miami's a fairly cheap major city, even though that's changing now. And it's nice weather, bro. So a lot of guys are moving here and the market here right now is booming. So if you could find a deal in Miami, it's worth it, which is why we're going to talk about this triplex that we did because we went through hell to get this one, but we learned a lot. So, you know, we want to definitely share some of those things with you. Uh, Super Chats real quick, Chris. Uh, yeah. It's okay, uh, we'll read them real quick, and then we'll talk about this this tri- triplex and how we found it. But no, thank you for bringing that up because that's really important for people to know that even though the deal doesn't look like the greatest on paper, if you drive around, it's amazing what you can find out when you drive around. And then also, um, guys, if you go on your county website, a lot of the times you'll be able to see upcoming um, developments coming to that area, which will give you a kind of an, uh, 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 I guess, a, a future glimpse of what's to come. And you can kind of almost, uh, how do I say this, predict the market. You know what I'm saying? Like we know, hey, there's a New York, big New York development happening here, right, with some New York investors. We know there's a train stop. It's an up-and-coming area because it's close to Wynwood. And it was like, all right, it's a no-brainer. We're going to overpay a little bit, but the cash flow is good. I think the cash on cash was still about 13% on this one. Somewhere um, 13 14%, somewhere around You there. know, and uh, and now the property appreciated. So we took a risk, but it was worth it. Uh, Sean Muhammad, uh, five bucks. Where in Miami can I get a decent duplex? I could put 20 to 30K down. Oh, uh, and would that be enough or FHA loan? Chris, can you make a sa- save that one? That's a really good question. We got y'all. And then Mr. Williams, $2. Poxon, what do you think of Arcane? Scale to 10. Uh, 10. Okay. Uh, Gay Z, I'm debating whether to feel like or take this heat. Okay. <laughs> 279. Five bucks. Demon got me. I would love to follow you on Instagram, Iron, but you blocked me. What? <laughs> Funny. How do I have you blocked? Uh, I think you might have blocked him, but you didn't know who he was. Yeah, my, I don't know. Okay. Gazy again. I right, bet Roger that, man. Okay. Hmm. Roger, can you help me find a decent duplex in Miami? I have about 20, 30K to put down and good credit. Okay. I think that's the guy that commented before. Sure, uh, you asked some good questions. We'll answer you. And then don't worry, guys. We're, uh, Roger's contact information is going to be below. And then Mr. Williams, five bucks. Question for Roger. Uh, wants you to get your NMLS is a state base only, or does it have jurisdiction anywhere once you're certified? Congratulations, Myron. That's a quick one. Uh, well, the NMLS, I mean, that's for loan officers. So I'm not sure what you're asking me about, but that's, yeah, I, I, I don't know about that. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then no BQs. Is it smart to put down 0%? Should you start by flipping or holding? How uh, do medicate? Oh, I think it means how do, how do you mitigate risk if you don't collateral? I've been working two years. Good question. We'll answer the, all these at the end. And then you guys ever pay for professionals to survey the area for growth? No, we did it ourselves on that one. Um, but... You know what I'm saying? You, I, I didn't even, is there a service that does that shit? Wait, what was that question? He's asking, do you pay for, for, for professionals to survey the area? I've never even heard you of that service. You guys pay professionals to survey the area for growth. You can. I, I know what he's talking about. You can. There are companies that do it. That's actually kind of expensive, which is why Myron works with guys like me. Yeah. That do the, if you're a grant card <laughs> owner and you got like a yeah. team, maybe. Yeah. But, but yeah. remember you mentioned uh, if someone of status that buys properties in that area, it's probably a good bet to buy. It. Like, like, for example, uh, what's the guy's name? Rob Rani? I forgot, I forgot the... Uh, oh, I know you're talking. You're... Moshimana. Moshimana, yeah. Moshimana, yeah. yeah. So, all right. So, what Fresh is talking about is kind of the cheat code. If you know, you know don't tell him. Never mind. All right, you can tell him. <laughs> <laughs> if Bruh. you are aware of other big developers moving into an area, that's a good sign that that area is moving in the right direction because they do their research. They have teams of people working for them, and people like to follow the big boys. Another cheat code is wherever. Whole Foods or Starbucks starts opening up. Ooh. 
Big fucking drop. fact. Because they definitely do not willy-nilly drop their stores anywhere. They've done tons of market research. And it's probably not going to be the hood. Yeah. Like, yeah. I- I'm just going to keep it all the way 1,000 with you guys. Chipotle, Apple Stores, Trader Joe's. Whole Foods, they're not opening in, in broke people territory, bro. And they're Chick- not. And Chick-fil-A? A block Definitely of- not. Yeah. I've seen Chick-fil-A in the hood, though, before. Mm, Where? Nah. Nah. In it's, the hood? It's probably, it's probably, Chick-fil-A? When we're in LA? No, it's, well, well, we're talking about Miami. No, okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? A block but, on shit. Yeah, but I'll, I'll say this, like, but for sure, Starbucks, mm. tried and true. Trader Joe's, Whole Foods, like, those are, gr- if you see those three, man, yeah. Star- Starbucks pretty is pretty much a big good. one. I hope yeah. Starbucks is a big one. Starbucks is a big one, guys. So that's a good point. If it's a Dunkin' Donuts, it's time to leave. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> for anyone that drinks that poverty coffee. So, uh, all right. So this property, uh, was that Trey? Oh, I can't hear you, bro. Uh, Chick Fil A is coming to Miami Gardens. Oh, it is coming to Miami. What? Okay, that's how you know it. Though, they, they don't care where they open. Then. Oh God damn. Miami Gardens is really uh, Carroll City, guys. That's, in case y'all didn't didn't know. <laughs> that's terrible. Y'all let me down. Yeah. Uh, Myron, you unblock uh, Kaizen Graphics. I don't uh, know who that is. Oh, that's... He does my thumbnails now on YouTube, but I, I think you got mad at him and you blocked him. Okay. <laughs> I mean, if, yo, if people send me dumb stuff, I just block. I don't even like... <laughs> I, 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 like, bro, I just, I just block. So I, I'll unblock you, bro. Don't worry. And then Vincent J, two dollars. When is Robert Kiyosaki anima- interview? Tomorrow, 6 Tomorrow. p.m. We got y'all. Don't worry. That's going to be a lit one. So, uh, and I'm glad that we talked about that first property because it sets the precedent for the second one now. No, absolutely. So, um, so okay. So, how do we find this first one? All right. So, I was looking through the MLS and just to give you an idea of what that involves. When I'm looking through, I typically go through a couple of hundred properties a day, and I literally have. In fact, I'm going to show Myron the list of all the properties I've like run numbers on since we've been doing this. But I ran across this one property. It was recently rehabbed. It was a triplex. Um, it had basically everything we were looking for as far as, you know, the roof was new, water heaters are new, um, AC's new. The only thing that was missing was separate, um, water meters, but that was negligible. Can you tell them real quick? Well, I mean, well, just so y'all know, me and Roger only do with, deal with turnkeys. We're not trying to do no rehab or fix and flip. Like, no, no, we, no absolutely. We buy, our, our, me and Roger's strategy is we find turnkeys. Buy and hold, collect cash flow. We don't do any any type of like you know crazy rehab, you know. Um, but and I think that's very important. So like when we're looking at like, can you tell them why it's so important, like to make sure the roof is on point and all these other things? Well, yeah. So the roof, water heaters, and AC typically are the most expensive things to either repair or replace, which is why it's important Trust that me, those have to be. Damn AC, <laughs> fresh out of and the AC, windows, bro. Twenty k gone. Yeah, so proof Bruh. right there. Those are typically the most expensive components of a home. So you want to make sure that either those are new or they're recent. And I'm not going to go into the specifics of how long a roof lasts because it depends on the material. Um, ACs are usually ten to fifteen years. Water heaters are usually around that time frame. So that's one of the things. Um, everything looked good. It was a small development company. They had done some other projects, which I had uh, went out and checked it out with a few uh, with the, their general contractor, which showed me some properties they've completed. It looks like their work was of good quality. And the most important thing, cash flow was great. Cash flow was about forty seven hundred a month, which when I ran the numbers, it came out to a little less than two thousand dollars a month um, profit. So this was pretty good. Unfortunately, when I first brought this to Myron's intention, he did not have the resources to make an offer. This is true. <laughs> yeah, I didn't have the uh, I didn't have the liquid capital guys to do it. So, um, and you brought this to me, I think, in May of last year, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, even earlier. I think. Yeah, it might have been early. Uh, it, it was like April. right after we closed the first deal. Because so, so, guys, on that first deal, remember we maybe, overpaid. Yeah, maybe even so, April. <laughs> yeah, maybe even maybe even April. Yeah, it was like April because I remember we had just finished. So we we I told you guys that first. Deal, I'm really glad you brought that up because now now I remember. So I overpaid about twenty thousand guys right mm-hmm. on on that deal. So because the bank only gave me a loan for a certain amount, so I had to overpay right. To you, get you didn't the overpay, property, not overpay, you, but you, I had to put more money out of my pocket. You closed the, uh, pr- you closed the gap between the appraisal. Yeah, and the contract but I had to price. put, I, yeah. had to, I had to basically, I had to put more money into the deal that I did not expect to put in. Yes. is basically what it is. So, 
I still look at it like, yeah, I overpaid on my well, Overpaid would be if it was worth yes. less than what you paid for it now, which yes. I ended not. up putting, I was supposed to put 25% down, but I ended up putting like 30 down. You know what I'm saying? 30% yeah. down. So to me, I look at it like, fuck. Because when I use the other, the bank's money, I'm like OPM, like it's other people's money. Yeah. But then I got to use my money. It's like, damn, I'm overpaid. But it's just my mental setup. But no, I did not overpay like in that sense. But the point is, is that. We, uh, I had to come out more with more money out of pocket, right? Because it didn't appraise. It, but it was a calculated risk. It was worth it. But obviously, it drained me out from a liquid perspective because I didn't have the money to do this deal. This deal, guys, when it when you showed it to me, wasn't it for like six fifteen? Yeah, it was six fifteen. It was it was six fifteen when when Roger showed it to me. So we would have had to come up with what for six fifteen, man. Uh, divided by four, we would have to come up with one hundred fifty three cash. So that, that that's cash. And that doesn't include closing costs, guys. That's just 25% down. So I didn't have that money at that time. Now so, you do. Yeah. Now, yeah. Uh, well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. Uh, so so we... Buy some, uh, buy some new pants. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I need to buy some new pants. <laughs> so, um, so, so, we've, so you found a deal and then what happened? Because I know a bunch of shit happened with right. this property. So obviously you weren't able to do it. Um, they, that deal went under contract. And one of the things I do, I don't... I don't basically break contact with people just because something goes on the contract because a lot of times things will get to the closing table and I will stress with everyone out there. It's important that you maintain relationships with other realtors mm -hmm. as well as sellers, as well as buyers. And you want, you want to keep those relationships going. So I kept That's in so the loop. Important. Yeah. I kept in the loop, kept, kept seeing what was going on. Meanwhile, Myron and I were looking at other properties, including one, <laughs> including one that also went under contract but uh that didn't get to the closing table either but that is a whole other separate issue i won't even get into but we kind of were looking at that and, and wait which one was that one the one we were talking about like the one we were talking about oh yeah yeah the two the two um the the the, 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 the duplex with the, the five, five two, with the five twos yeah so that's a whole other issue let's not talk about that one exactly so so we basically were, when you go for to get properties there's no guarantee you're gonna get it uh, when you go for it but Correct. That was so, a good deal we missed out on, yeah. bro. We How, fucked up. However, what I'm stressing is that just because you miss out on the deal in one, you know, in in May, doesn't mean that you just basically walk away and just, you know, I like I said, I always circle back. I contact mm -hmm. the real estate agent, or if I can have direct access to the seller, and I ask them, hey, what's going on? Does it look like it's going to close? Because like, I still have someone interested. So I so I kept that going. So it just so happened, and I think this was back in June, that I contacted them again. I'd circled back, and I was like, yeah, so I noticed I hadn't closed yet. What was going on? And they're like, yeah, so that, that deal fell apart. And I'm like, really? Mm. And at this point, Myron was in the position that um, he, could you know, he could pursue it. Because I talked to him about it, and he was like, oh, it's that property from Fort He was like, yeah, dude, what do we have to do? I didn't even think do? twice. Yeah, he was like, what do we have to do? So... I was able to negotiate them down to Why five. did the other deal fall through? There was something. Well, it was a, well, I mean, we're not saying any names, but well, you know, now nah, I actually, I don't want to get into it on, on, on the air because <laughs> no, something was told to me in confidence. I don't want to. Oh, okay. That. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No worries. Then no worries. Yeah. He's the, loyal. Why, why, why that deal didn't go through? Yeah. I, yeah. Cause she told me that information in confidence. So I'm okay. not, even though. Oh, she. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Even though it's not out there, it's just just for a professional courtesy. I'm not going to repeat it. So. Yeah, yeah. It was basically long story short, guys. The 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 um the buyer didn't want to pay a certain amount of money if we're going to or whatever. Yeah, but that's yeah. basically what it is. But yeah, so getting back to this, um, so we circled back. I was able to get it down to five ninety. Um, I inquired as to why the previous it was back deal on has the market apart. for six hundred. I remember. Yeah, yeah. Came yeah. back on, on for six hundred. Or oh, actually it was on for six oh four, actually. Yes, yes, sorry. Six oh four. Yeah. So the problem that they had is they had like some permitting issue. They had some permitting issues. Permitting. They, Can you tell them what permitting is? All right. So whenever you get work done on a property, well, actually let me not say whenever you get work done, but there's a lot of things that you do to a property that will require a permit. And that can vary based on county, state, region. So, yeah, I mean, even from Miami to Broward County, there's there's different things that they require permits for. So in this case, they had some outstanding permits that needed to be resolved. Um, initially, 
it did not seem like something that would take them very long to get resolved. And he said that that was the reason that the um, other buyer had walked away. So we decided to get under contract. Um, like I said, it was completely rehabbed. So didn't really see what, you know, why this permitting issue would be a big deal because it was a fully rehab property, right? And so. a permit, guys, is nothing more than just like basically permission from the city to, you know, have certain, um, what, new features on the building? Because they, because, because, modifications. modifications, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, correct. So the, if we're going to make it really like, you know, nice, nice and simple, that's basically what it is. Is like the city permits you to make additions to the property. So that's where we're kind of like, that's what they were kind of like waiting on. Now, this is where it gets interesting. While we had it under contract, the sellers... And we got it under contract for 600K. Uh, no, 590. 590. I'm sorry, 590. guys. 590. Um, yeah. Actually, let's go through the appraisal, too. So we got it under contract for 590. We ran the appraisal. Appraisal came back at 600. Yep. So we gained an instant $10,000 of... Yeah, so $10,000 uh, worth of equity capture. Yeah, immediately. So now, with that being said... It's cash flowing close to two thousand, ten thousand dollars worth of equity capture. We were looking at a cash on cash rate in the mid teens. And this property is also in Northwest Miami as well, guys, and kind of the same vicinity as where I bought the first property. Yeah, not, not too, too far, far away. It, yeah, is it by Little River? It's a little, little south of there, a okay. little south and west. It's on the other side of ninety five, a little south and west, cool, but. Cool. Let's, let's not give too much information out for That's people okay. to figure out. They got to stalk us anyway. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. Go ahead. Um, so, yeah. So, appraisal came back. Inspection came back. You know, same little minor issues. Oh, by the way, for you guys that don't know out there, um, seems like most homes have some a little bit of termite infestation. So, that's kind of normal down here. It's hot and humid. And I guess termites like that down here. Um, so, everything looked good. We had a closing date for about, what, 34 days out? July, we're supposed to close. Correct. We wanted a contract like June 27th, and this is where yeah, the yeah, craziness late, begins, late, guys. Late, yeah, late June. Unfortunately, during that time, and then during that time of them getting their permitting issues resolved, I guess they had done something incorrect with one of the permits, <laughs> which then caused them to invalidate all of the permits that had already been approved. So they literally had to start over from scratch. Damn. And just for you guys to know, I spoke to my cousin up in New York. He said it's the same thing in New York City. If one permit is done improperly, they will roll back everything, and you have to start over from scratch. Sheesh. Hell so, no. guys, for you guys that are fixing flippers. That was flippers, a painful lesson we learned. Make sure that you know what permits to get and that you are doing what you need to do properly or else you might face a situation like this. And just so you guys know, y'all heard. We went under contract in late June, right? And now we didn't close until what? November 15th. Freaking, yeah, November, November 15th, 15th, guys, which is unheard of to be under contract for that damn long. But, you know, it is what it is. But uh, we'll, we'll talk about why we, we waited out and then some of the mistakes we made on this thing. So, uh, I mean, realistically, it's still a good deal. Um, and it's not really any mistakes that we made. Oh, I, I mean, can think of one. Well, if you want to share, share. I just think that, um, yeah, the developers. Oh, and that, that's another thing, too. I, uh, another contributory factors to the fact that they're taking so long for them to resolve were two things. A, the city of Miami building department, from what I've been told, had like two or three people working in the office. Everyone else was working from home, and they were woefully understaffed. And B, because of the Champlain Towers incident, they were also extremely, extremely precise and double checking, triple checking, and very strict on everything. For some of you guys that don't know, an apartment building collapsed in Miami this this uh, a few months back. Yep. So if you were trying to get anything <laughs> with permits, the the city was extremely strict, and they were behind because of you know the beer bug. Like, for, keep in mind, guys, that Florida, Florida was fair, fair you know, pretty much open. But Miami was the last city and the last county to open up, up after, you know, the, the shutdowns from, from COVID. So um, that obviously created an enormous amount of backlog with the city. And then on top of that, think about it. The city's population is exploding. So the city's population is exploding. We're just opening back up. And then on top of that, a building toppled right in Miami Beach. 
So and, uh, kill people too. Yeah, and people. How? Uh, yeah, a bunch uh, of people died. Ninety six, I think. Yeah, so yep. they were on high alert, bro. So they didn't care. About, fuck your triplex. They're like, they, yep. they were just like. Not know. to mention, they're already <laughs> slow by itself. So imagine <laughs> all of that too. No, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it, it was a dub, bro. You gonna have to take an L on that one. So, so yeah, so we waited, and then also I'll give you guys a personal mistake that I made. I went to the same bank. Right? And oh. I, that that was a big <laughs> fuck up for me, man. Like, I'm going to have to give myself one. Stupid. Of, so I went gotcha. to. Stupid. Thank you, Chris. I deserve that one as well. Stupid. So, <laughs> 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 yeah, it's okay. I'll give myself Stupid. another one. Yo, real talk, guys. So I had I had closed a deal. I had closed two deals with this bank, right? Prior. I, I did the deal with Roger, and then I closed another deal in Connecticut. And then this deal came along. And then I, I got another deal in Connecticut. So I was essentially under contract for two different properties. Again, after closing two deals, one in Connecticut, one in Florida. So the guy that I dealt with at the bank, he loves me. He's like, hey, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's all good. We could do it. But then it got to the underwriter. Like, oh, we can't put this one. Ah, da, da. So I had to scramble, right? I literally had to turn into Fred Flintstone and his motherfucker and just and get another, uh, get another lender. And thankfully to Roger, Roger is very connected here in Miami. He knows, uh, you know, uh, a lot of uh, lenders, other people like that. And we were able to get a guy, shout out to Dave, you know what I'm saying? And um, he made it happen. You know what I'm saying? He basically was like, nope, I, uh, well, actually, you know what? The bank took that deal, but Dave ended up taking another deal. But the bank originally said, no, we're not going to give you a loan on this triplex. And then I went to Dave and then they came back, doubled back and said, no, 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 we'll do the deal. We'll do the deal. Because I was so, going to leave them. So let me break that a little. Let me break that down a little bit. Yeah, please. So, uh, all Perfect. right. So, yeah, we have the triplex under contract. And obviously, I'm, uh, I watch the show. And I keep hearing Myron talking about, I have three properties under contract. I have three properties. No, no, two at the time. Two at the t- Didn't you have two? No, you had two. You, you literally two. Yeah, I had, I had two. Uh, just the, the, that one and then the one in Connecticut. Not one that, I thought you had the second one in Connecticut, two not at the yet. same time. No, 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 no. That so. was until later. We ended up getting three because it took this one so damn long. Okay. So I'm hearing him say you have two in properties, and, and I'm just like, I kind of went over this my head. Lender. And then I found out that he went and got another co- property under contract with the same lender at the same time that he had this property. Yeah. And another thing with the underwriter, the underwriter that was handling his case literally just started working for the bank. Yeah. Which uh, means she was gonna be super strict, yeah, strict and make sure everything was a hundred percent, yeah. So that kind of blew things up from a financing standpoint. And yeah, we had to kind of separate and go to another lender for a deal in Connecticut. And to, then, yeah. and then I actually took the Miami deal that I'm doing with Roger. I was I took that one over to 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 Dave as well, the other lender. And what he did, he 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 had it ready. He was ready to take it on. Uh, but then the bank doubled back and said, no, 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 we'll do it. And they already yeah. had all my paperwork. So I said, all right, fine, whatever. And then I ended up doing the Connecticut deals with the other guy. But the mistake is, uh, the, basically the learning lesson, guys, is uh, don't go under, uh, try, try to use different lenders, man. You know, when you go under contract for multi- multiple properties, Correct. unless like you have a really good, I mean, no. and I did have a good relationship, but no, still no, like, no, yeah, don't, don't. don't do it, bro. Don't <laughs> fucking do it. Don't I do mean, it. Yeah, you, you might get unlucky with a new underwriter and stuff. Like, don't do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, Yeah. If if you're gonna try to do Don't multiple do properties at the same, use different lenders. Yeah, just as a general rule. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. I figured that one out. Yeah. So okay. Yeah. yeah that especially if you're gonna go through a bank. If you're going through like a lender that like has multiple banks under him, mm-hmm. like our guy now, he has very uh, he's he's connected. So like he 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 has other banks that he can go to. So he's like kind of a middleman to, to, to broker a yeah, deal for you. He's a mortgage bank. broker. He's yeah. a mortgage broker is essentially yeah. what he is, guys. But see, either way, just having a good realtor around you that knows this stuff can kind of help you avoid those mistakes because I'm pretty sure he didn't tell you what he was doing there, so that's why he didn't tell I you. I know. When he actually told me what was the, going on, I'm just like, well, this deal's dead. <laughs> well, my, my contact at the bank was like, no, we can do it. That's the only reason I, cause I, I had this concern. I told him, can we do this? He said, yeah, we could do it. No problem. You know what I'm saying? So... And they had all my financial stuff, so they knew. So then when they told me last minute, oh, no, we can't fund it now, I was like, what the hell? But we had this permit issue regardless. Mm-hmm. So it was whatever. So, okay, so that's a little mistake that I made, guys. So, so learn from that. Go to, go, go to multiple lenders or get one guy that has access to multiple yeah, lenders. Yeah, a mortgage that's broker. even better. A, more, a good mortgage broker is like worth its weight in gold. So um, Super chats? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll read the super chats. And then we'll talk about how we got over this permit crap. 
Uh, in regards to cash flow, after you purchase the home, how do you lease it? Where do you advertise and how long is the ideal lease? Also, what markup do you include in rent when leasing? Okay, excellent question. Money guy, four questions in one. Uh, Ten dollars, Eddie Ortez, uh, Ortiz. Thank you so much. Two dollars is a twenty-five percent down payment. Do you pay with credit? Ooh. Two dollars, Robert Sinanis. No, you can't do that. Uh, <laughs> Coco Puff, Myron, don't you worry about vaccines considering that you're on the hook for like five mortgages and the YouTube career makes you income oh, variable? Vacancies. You vacancies. Means vacancies. I got to get my glasses. Vacancies. How do you hedge this risk? Good question. I'll answer that at the end. Um, yeah, and, we're going to no, answer I, all the questions I mean, at the end, guys. That one I can answer very simply. It's yeah. called best product at best price. And also, if, you don't over, if you don't overprice your rent, your chances that you're going to have vacancies in a market like we're having now are very low. And also... For Miami, vacancy is like less than three percent. I mean, no, like right now, it's insane. Yeah, yeah. There, Everyone's a, coming here. There's so a, there's either a waiting way, list. You could either Airbnb it. You could do short term. You don't really lose in terms of vacancy. And guys, I get tenants in place, so well, that's honestly that, that's actually another thing you was talking about when you said turnkeys. Yeah. We've been looking for properties that already have tenants in place, and when we go into contract, stipulation of the contract is we have the right to review the leases. And anything in the lease that Myron does not like, he can basically say, I want out of this deal. And that's a contingency. So, yeah. So that, yeah, that's another thing, you know, you got to have your contract written up a certain way. Uh, but there was other parts of that question that I'll answer, but, but just, can you say that one, Chris? Yeah, All right. Fine. So going back to it. So, okay. So we got a uh, brisk clown too. Oh, brisk yeah, clown. We got him. Oh, okay. Uh, 50 bucks. I'm so late. Glad I didn't miss the whole show. Shout out to you guys for always giving us, uh, giving us guys informative tip. We got y'all. And then, uh, Michael Mies Mietroke, uh, with the big, uh, thank you so much. Cause I fucked up with the bank thing there. Stupid. Uh, but Hey, you learn, right? So we I just want to make sure I share that with y'all so you don't make the same mistake. And then 10 hours, Jerry, man, what is the process of converting a property that was originally obtained through an FHA into a rental property? Ooh. Good question. We'll answer that at the end. So we'll get through this and then we'll do the Q and A at the end, guys. You guys are asking some really fucking good questions. Uh, okay. So um, so where we, so okay so we we ended up getting the deal back with the bank and then uh, we're waiting for the permits and then what else? Um, and yeah, it was just, it, it it was it was yeah it was waiting for city the of Miami to, taking yeah, forever city of Miami building department which um it even involved me calling down there literally every other day trying to figure out where we were at in the process what was going on if everything was going smoothly you know at, at after about a couple of months started getting a little uh i guess nervous or you know just wanted to check up just making sure that the sellers weren't just um y yanking our chain or just wasting our time and making sure that they were proceeding but um yeah yeah roger actually called the city of miami multiple times to make sure that the guy that was selling us the property was actually like putting in the you know the paperwork required to get the permits necessary so that we can close this deal so uh so that was also something really good that no, you were yeah, doing absolutely. a follow-up and unfortunately it seemed like the the main holdup was the city the, the city it so. wasn't the seller it was actually yeah. the city so um all right so so moving on so uh what, what else do we do we want to tell them about the closing or did we miss something um i mean i don't think so okay so we get to closing <laughs> right guys you know we're all excited finally you know what i'm saying i i, I rush up to up north to wire the money and everything else like that to meet Roger at the bank because where we close is uh, up north for a lot of the area. And um, we show up to closing. I sign the paperwork and they don't give us the keys. And I'm like, uh, <laughs> yo, like, what? Where's the fucking keys? And, um, and they're like, hey, like, uh, you know, we don't have the keys, whatever. So we hit up the, the, the owner and we're like, bruh where's the keys like what, what's going on here like we're you know we're closed whatever and he's like oh well the money hasn't hit our account yet blah 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 like we're you know we don't give the keys over until the money doesn't hit, until the money hits the account and i was like bro the money goes because here in the state of florida and I, I should mention this too guys the state of florida is a is a title state we don't do lawyers i know some states like connecticut yeah, for yeah. example they use a lawyer so when i do my deals in connecticut i have to go through the lawyer as the as the as the media is the as uh, the medium right he holds the money and he transfers it between the people here in, in florida we have a title company they they hold the money and then you know they do, you know give you all your documents everything else like that you close over there and then bang they transfer the money over to the to the seller um but i was like bro they have the money they gave you the, co the you know the confirmation that they have the money so what the hell why do we not, we not have the keys what was the excuse oh yeah so, was it so, the bank not yeah the so let me back up the, yeah go ahead so first of all we ended up having to do a very late closing because we closed it i think five o'clock yes so the money 
didn't get transferred to the cellar until the following morning. Mm-hmm. But that not you know that and the closing was late because of the seller by the way i want to yeah. make that extremely clear they didn't give us the the, the wiring instructions until f- in the middle until like 3 p.m it Damn. all right so this week that we closed it was the same week as veterans day the bank was closed on veterans day then there was information coming from the seller's attorney that did not get to title until late Veterans Day, then the bank had to review and process all that information on Friday, which is why we ended up having to push the closing back until Monday. And even then, we had to do a late closing. So everything ended up getting to the seller's account um, by, I think, noon Tuesday. Yep. And that's when they felt comfortable with releasing the keys. Yeah. Stupid. And and, uh, I mean... And just just to let y'all know, like they got to give you guys the key, the keys at closing. Obviously, we got lucky. You know, I ended up what I ended up doing was uh, he dropped the, the keys off at his lawyer because him and Roger got into like an argument. <laughs> no, I mean it's it's not really an <laughs> argument. I mean, I mean, I'll I'll just say it. Look, yeah, go ahead. if you sign a contract saying you're supposed to give keys at closing and you do not deliver keys in closing, you you're in breach of contract. And I'm repeating what I, my, my attorney told me. So yeah, I mean, and I'm sure if you spoke to Jennifer Pratt. Yeah, I mean, we could have, yeah, potentially could have done something, but, so, you know, we, it is what it is. You know, I, I went, the, luckily his lawyer was close by, Coral mm-hmm. Gables, so I just went down there, got the keys. Bro, I have done. never heard of a closing where you don't get the keys right there. Bro, I was end. tight. That's only like an open opening because <laughs> the keys are still there. <laughs> God damn, bro. That's wild. Yeah. So, so yeah, we didn't, we didn't get the keys at the closing, but like I said, money hit his account. He told me he left it at his lawyers. His lawyers was right down the street. So I went. I got it. It is what it is. It was annoying. It was an inconvenience. But we closed the deal, got it done. It took several months to get it done. But, you know, we were patient and everything else. Now, I know what some of you guys are wondering. Well, Myron, what the hell? Why don't you just back out the deal? Weren't there a bunch of other deals going on in Florida? Well, guys, you guys got to remember, the area that the property is located in is fantastic. Up and coming, right? Number two, it was a triplex and everything was pretty much brand new in it. Number three. Two of the tenants are Section 8, okay, which is uh, Section 8, guys, is, is a government housing program that uh, covers a portion of rent depending on what the people qualify for. So that's guaranteed money once you get accepted, which I'm going to, uh, I got to go through the process right now of getting it accepted, right? Uh, also, um, the, uh, what else? The property gained $10,000 of equity instantly. Like, and here's the, the, the crazy thing, guys. We ran that appraisal in July, okay? We went under contract in June. Right, we made the offer for uh for five for five ninety, got it under contract, had an appraiser out there within like a week or two. Not even. Yeah. Not like a day or two. Immedi- yeah, we were yeah we were out there with the appraiser. The appraiser was out there immediately, and then it came back at six hundred thousand. Guys, that was in July. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's gonna go up now because I know a bunch of people are gonna tr- are kind of come here in the winter time because it's cold and the high season in Miami is right now anyway. So it, I wouldn't be surprised if it's you know closer to six ten at this point, right? Because the property is appreciating at a ridiculous rate down here in Miami because the occupancy rates are low. Everyone's moving down here. New York developers are moving down here. People from California are moving here. It's warm. It's wild. It's wild, bro. And and Miami, like I said, I, I've been telling you guys this for the better part of a year. Me and Fresh have been telling y'all Miami is one of the best kept secrets for major cities in the United States when it comes to cost of living. Now, I think the secret's out. You know what I'm saying? And people are coming here. But luckily, me and Fresh kind of got grandfathered in with good rental rates. Hell but yeah. But it was at a, like, Steals. last year, bro, you could have came to Miami, got an apartment in Brickell, which is the Manhattan. Ocean View. Ocean View, whatever it is, for, for 2K a month, a one bedroom. Yeah. For between 1500 to 2K a month, easy. Y'all see that view? Yeah. Bruh. You know what New, I'm saying? New York oh. will be I'll like, what, six, small seven, small six, small. six to 10K? Bro. Easily, you, you, no, you, no. you, you pay for an apartment, like this in bro. New York, yo, bro. It would be, it would New York be City, 20, 30k, bro. There no. you go, even more. You, you got if you pay 10k, you're gonna be in Manhattan and you're probably gonna be looking at another building when you look outside <laughs> your shit, bro. And Facts. it's gonna be stinky, there's gonna be rats, and, and you know, and you might get a doorman. Think about Fifth this. floor, <laughs> you're in Miami, there's so many things going on, not to mention even the lifestyle is totally different and it's warm pretty much all year round. You can't beat that. You can't beat Here's that. The thing. People, people, think, be here. people think that Miami's expensive because they use Miami Beach prices. Guys, Miami Beach and Miami are not the same. Let me make that extremely yeah. clear. It's not the same. Miami Beach is where the tourists go. It's a tourist trap. Extremely expensive, overpriced. I would never bucks buy for out there. Three drinks. Yo, Hell r- no. Real talk. If you don't club and if you don't spend money stupidly, you'll be fine. Yeah. yeah. Yo, I, I made it here. 
making ten dollars uh ten dollars an hour, right, bro? Working at Chick fil A. <laughs> hey, if I could do that, y'all niggas could do that even even better <laughs> so, than me. So yeah. like So this is crazy guys, cause like when I met Fresh, yeah. we were like hanging out, freaking freaking top forty two bricks, all these I had no idea at Fresh. I was broke, dude. Literally, I had no idea. I'll go to a party, right, bro, and get lit for free because I don't want, I don't buy alcohol. Two with the boys and like I'm just having fun. But if you go and buy bottles and tables, then you're gonna be broke. Yeah, so that's, that's a fact. That's the problem. Oh, by the yeah. way, one thing I will say, since day one I knew this dude, he was wearing his CEO chain. My oh, man <laughs> yeah, Roger, <not>. man. <laughs> he knows, man. Yeah. Solid. So um uh so yeah, guys. So that's why I stuck in a deal and and made it uh you know, made it happen because I knew that that property was gonna be you know, it was gonna be a good deal. So final numbers. All right. Close so, that. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah hit him so with the are. numbers. So I brought got, the closing. I think we put 15k down to get under contract, right? As a because mm -hmm. they wanted a little bit more on on a, on a down payment. So I put 15k down, guys, and and then uh, we came to closing with about 144 thousand. Well, all right. So that's the thing. So bought the property for 590. Yep. It appraised for 600. Yep. Total money out of pocket for you was 144. Four hundred one hundred forty four thousand four hundred forty four dollars. Yep, that gives you a and it brings in forty seven hundred gross. We gave a down payment of fifteen too. No, no, but that that's included in the money out of pocket. Oh, that, yeah, okay, oh yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the monthly gross is forty seven hundred. After expenses, that's a little shy of two thousand dollars. That gives you a cash on cash of fifteen percent, cap rate of seven point nine. Actually, you know what? It's going to be two thousand, a little bit more than two thousand, because I did the math. The monthly bill, guys, is going to be twenty six eighty two. Oh, that see, I did so, ask you for that earlier. You yeah, send it to me. It's, it's, it's twenty six anyway, eighty two monthly payment right now, guys. On the what I have here, your first year, once we factor in annual appreciation of about five percent, which I underestimated. Yeah, and seven percent appreciation, you're making twenty seven point twenty one. Well, actually, a little bit more than that. Twenty seven, more than twenty seven percent on your first year. Sheesh. There you go. Tell me how you're going to get, if you're going to get that on the stock market. Uh, the answer to that is, uh, nope. nope. Yeah. No, guys. You know, and, and I will get in stocks. Don't worry, guys. But, yo, I don't care what nobody say. The safest, sure, far away to make a good investment. Now it is, especially, and get cash flow guaranteed once you make the right choices with the right, right realtor. It's real estate. It's real estate, bro. Like, yo, 97% of millionaires hold real estate. You know what I'm saying? Like, the, not to mention tax advantages. Tax advantages. Write offs. Yep. Bro, like, you. You, you you can't beat it. Yeah. And if you want to sell it later on for a higher price, you probably will because appreciation for the most part. Yeah. If you want to. Especially if you buy in a hot market. Granted, well, I'm, I ain't never selling my stuff. But, you know, you could if you needed to. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, 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 and guys, <laughs> I'm just going to fucking say it, bro. <laughs> Inflation is here. Yep. Okay? Correct. Hyperinflation is fucking Tell here. Tell them about Moshi Moshi with the oh, sodas. Oh, yeah. Yo, so guys, <laughs> last week, bro. I'm there at Moshi Moshi. I get myself a Diet Coke and a friend, right? Two Diet Cokes. And, and, and the waitress forgot to charge me for the Diet Cokes. So she comes back, oh, my bad. And she goes to get like the thing and charge me again. And it's 624. And I thought about it. I was like, Shraggy? 620? Like, well, well, hold on. <laughs> what? 624 for two Diet Cokes, Diet Cokes and a, a fucking can. can? And then that, like, bro, I was like, and granted, you know, it's not like the most expensive, but like the, it hit me. I was like, yo, you could get this for like, you used to be able to get this for a dollar. Yeah. I was like, what's he, what's he worried about? Then, oh shit, for, for the Coke? I'm like, damn, that's crazy. Yeah. It's, it's, it, guys, hyperinflation is here, bro. Like, and this is my thing. I don't care what you guys do. You guys know me and Fresh are also involved in crypto and real estate. You want to get into stocks, whatever it is. The point is this, guys. Outside of your emergency savings, your six month to one year savings, right? Whether you want to hold it in cash or hold it in a bank account, whatever you want to do. Me personally, I I I think it's probably better to hold it in cash at this point. You never know. Yeah, you never pulling know. that money out the bank is gonna be a pain in the ass. Power grids go crazy. Who knows, bro? You can't you can't get out. And then if you pull out more than ten thousand dollars, and I know this from you know being fed back in the day, you gotta fill out a goddamn uh, CTR currency transaction report. You know what I'm saying? So the IRS is looking at you, monitoring you, and all this other shit. So it's like, well, you shouldn't be doing anything illegal anyway, guys stay away from crime but you know what i'm saying it's a pain in the ass so it's like outside of your six months to one year of, of you know savings right for for emergency like bro you should be taking all that money and, and dumping it into something bro that's gonna appreciate ethereum is i'll just say it's pretty much you know uh inflation resistant 
Real estate, it's going to go up with time. You know, there's no, like, it. Oh, even if there's a market crash, it always goes back up. And you make money real time. Bam. That's the biggest thing. Yeah. That's the biggest thing. That's the thing with crypto and all this other stuff. Like, unless you're trading crypto and you know what the hell you're doing, Forex, whatever, you ain't making money real time. You get one big bang if you're lucky. Yeah. And then you're done. Yeah. Versus real estate, your tenants are paying down your, your debt. Your property's appreciating with value. You're getting money in the meantime. Like, it's it's a win-win. And then on top of that, you could pull money out of that goddamn house and use it for something else. Remember what, what Grant Card Cardone said? He said, I lost money doing e-commerce. I lost money selling products, doing speaking engagements. But I never lost money with real estate. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, guys? Yep. So, listen, man. Like I said, my main thing, guys, is I agree with Grant Cardone on this. Mm -hmm. Cash is trash. Whether you want to put it into crypto, your business, whatever it is, Get rid of fiat currency, bro. Outside of like, you know, a six month saving cushion, get rid of fiat currency. Bro, if you're living in these times, these modern times, right? You got money in the bank, you're stupid. Yeah, facts. Because think about stupid. this. Most millionaires, or people that you know with money, they get money and it goes right back out. Because either it's going to go to an asset to pay you monthly or go to luxury or experience to increase their wealth or their mindset. And they're investing in their self and their family. If you can hold, hold, hold your money like, oh, I'm going to hold all this, all this money because, you know, for rainy day, whatever. I should do that stupid shit. That's fine. The problem is, though, is that, like, when things come for you to either take advantage of, either by buying things at a lower price or, like, you know, uh, investing yourself or, or into assets, you're not doing it because you're holding on to your money. But if you did that, you're going to get way more back in return. So don't hold on to your money, man. Yeah, bro. Like, invest in something, man. Especially yeah. if it's your business or real estate, guys. Yeah. Yo, also, guys, if you make a decent amount of money, you know what I'm saying, you're making six figures, whatever, you're a prime target for taxes. Bro. You got to find a way to get that earn co in earned income down, bro. Got to. Because the more earned income you report, the higher your liability and the more you're going to owe Uncle Sam. And I'll tell y'all something, bro. I used to work with IRS agents hand in hand. They're coming after if you owe a significant amount of money, bro, or you're somebody. They're coming after you. You know what I'm saying? IRS agents are the biggest nerds. Okay? And don't worry, guys. <laughs> they I'll do, playing. When I do, uh, I'll do an episode on getting into law enforcement. I'll go over each agency, the differences, because I've worked with everyone, bro. Everyone from FBI to DEA to, uh, you know, uh, every other uh, secret service. Every, any three-letter agency you could think of, I've worked with in the feds pretty much. So I'll break that down for y'all when we talk about getting into law enforcement on one of the other uh, Money Mondays. But yeah, depreciation, like... Guys, you got to find a way, especially if you're a higher earner, six figure or more, to bring down your earned income because what they want you to do is not claim it. You know, get a W 2 job, earn $100,000 a year plus, and let them destroy you with taxes. When I was working for Uncle Sam, they were killing me on taxes, guys. You know what I'm saying? And here's the other thing, too tax evasion. They'll come after you guys 100%. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> Al Capone killed a lot Yo. of people. But they got it for tax They'll evasion. get you for that 100%, bro. You know what I'm saying? So you want to mitigate your liability in taxes. Tax evasion is illegal, but tax avoidance is not. And lowering your liability legally is not. Okay, guys? So don't be stupid. All right? Question um, answer? Yeah, quite. We'll hit the Q&As now. Uh, and I hope you guys are enjoying the show. Guys, guys, I don't want to stop it. Please like the video. And a quick note, guys, when you're doing real estate especially, you need a mentor. Because there's so many things that can go wrong. Thanks. As Myron Mary mentioned earlier, he did something wrong and he didn't know. But a mentor that knows his stuff, like Roger here, can guide you down the path. Because even me, my first property, I hit off with a bank. But it's not because I was smart about it or I knew what I was doing. I knew some things, but not enough to say, hey, this is a good deal. Versus my mentor, he actually knew what to buy and where not to do, what, what not to do and what to do. That being said, buying through him, I got a dope-ass deal. I found, found my own way. Now, Myron, using Roger, as his like safe safe compass and now he's getting killer deals getting a lot a lot of money down uh less money down all that stuff happening so guys have a mentor in your life that knows real estate and go through him don't try to figure it out on yourself yeah you know? no definitely man like ha you yeah. want someone that's knowledgeable that you can spin ideas with yeah man. have to uh okay we got jay win currently looking at a 16 unit but fha loans only allowed to four units yeah bro uh yeah, would you four. guys have any experience on getting commercial loans yes but <sighs> I mean, if you want, you can hit me on the DM, Roger underscore Lasad on Instagram. But dude, that's 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 a yeah. pretty big that's a pretty big deal. I mean, you you, you ain't you, gonna you, get an FHA on a guys. Remember, FHA is is for people that are like trying to get like you know, like a first home or yeah. they're trying to like get into you know buy a property. And the thing with FHA is you gotta live in it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And they're only gonna allow you because once you pass four units, guys. Yeah. It goes now you're commercial. commercial, which is a whole other world. If you want to get your feet wet and get into the game, 
you can do FHA. Here's the problem though. You got to pay poly PMI, so it's private market insurance. Yeah. And secondly, you have to live there. Now, there are all ways you can kind of like, you know, do things to get around this uh, clause, but is it no, the isn't. best way? There, there is no, no way not. to get around that clause. Absolutely not. <laughs> Listen, man. That's not what Fred said. Listen, man. You have to live in the property for one year. No, no, no. No, that part you have to. Yeah. I'm just saying, like, <laughs> Nigeria. <laughs> other stuff. So, Nigeria. FHA, you got to live in it. You got to be there. And also, as well, keep you in mind. talk about the other stuff, guys. PMI, <laughs> you can get out of it later because you can also uh, refinance and get, get that gone. But if you're in an FHA loan, you got to live there. And it's, it's cheaper because it's 3% down. But it comes with a cost because you got to live, live in the property. So yeah. if it's in the hood, <laughs> like how I, how I used to live in the hood, you're in trouble. Uh, <laughs> uh, so um, <laughs> okay. So uh, what are, what are the other questions? Um, yeah, but you ain't gonna get an FHA on a 60 unit, my friend. Yeah, and you better have a lot of money to do to do that deal, depending on where you're at. You know what I'm saying? Uh, five bucks, like uh, Mick Mikai. Okay, so the point of rental properties is cash flow from the tenants to eventually pay off the loan you took out because you're going into a lot of debt. Absolutely. Yep. But guys, I need you guys to understand something because a lot of people interpret debt and like they think bad, bad debt, bad debt, bad. Which, which honestly, it is bad most of the time. But you guys are thinking of consumer debt. You know what I'm saying? Credit card debt, debt that you're using to procure things, right? That don't necessarily pay you back, but when you're using a bank, right, to get a loan and you're purchasing a property that pays for itself and also pays you a small dividend, right, through rent, right? I'm using the term dividend simply just to explain to you guys that you're getting money paid back to you. Then it's okay because your tenant is paying down your liability for you. So you don't really lose. So you don't lose. So there's nothing wrong with, with taking debt on when it's real estate debt. Now, if, it's, if you're going to live in a property, let's say you buy a single family home. Right, which is what Americans do. Right, most uh, the American dream. I'm gonna buy a single family home. I'm gonna take a mortgage on this motherfucker. I'm only gonna put down, you know, three and a half percent, whatever. Then that's when you're starting to stupid. Yeah, because now you got to anchor on your, uh, you got to, you got to anchor on your ankle, right? Because you have to pay this house down, and you're responsible for paying the mortgage. All, All of it. Expenses to damages. Everything. You're in it, so you know what I'm saying, and that's what most Americans do. But most Americans, their basic biggest expense is their home. You know what I'm saying? And then car. You know, so which which uh, it, which is for anyone, right? I get it, but this you can, is why you can house hack. Bam! Live yes, in thank a, you. a multifamily. Yeah. So, so for example, this is what I did. I had three units, right? Bought a property, three percent down. I, had, I think it was like ten or twelve k. I spent in total for the for the uh, property and closing. Got into the property, lived in one unit. Other two units paid the mortgage. So pretty much, I lived for, I lived for free for six months. Yep, for a year. For a year. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, Roger. <laughs> Shout out to Nigeria. <laughs> but yeah. So, um, so yeah, guys. So you definitely want to make sure <clears throat> you want to make sure that uh, the debt that you're getting is not consumer debt. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Which is what I get it. Y'all probably watch Dave Ramsey and he tells you no debt, right? Wh which is, which is good sound advice for most Americans. But over here, you know, we operate with an RP mindset. We think outside the box. We're not thinking yeah. like everyone else. Right, ooh, could buy Gucci bag. No, I'm in debt. Oh, ho, ho, ho. stupid. Like, no, you guys are getting in debt with purchasing an asset that pays for its goddamn self. Yeah, and gives you a little bit uh, of, uh, and obviously gives you something also as no, well, like don't a little go bit of cash flow. Get debt and go buy Gucci, Dior, Louis Vuitton, and say, oh, this is assets. No, it's stupid. It's not <laughs> yeah, asset. that's dumb. Bro. Real estate asset. Uh, okay. Uh, what? Okay. What else do we what got here? Okay. Me? Crypto cat. Any suggestions you guys have on getting into commercial real estate? Yeah, I'm going to start of, next lot, year. Uh, yeah. yeah. A lot of questions about commercial. Um, yeah, it's it's a lot to get into. But like I said, you could always DM me and I could point you with some right resources. But the first thing I will say is that you're, you're definitely going to need a team of people. Mm -hmm. Realtor, attorney, depending on the real estate, architects, money. engineers. <laughs> you're going to need money. Cetera, you're going to need friends that have money. Yeah. So, so that you can like put the money to fund these deals. Cause once you get into commercial, depending on where you're at, bro, yeah. like here in Miami, you ain't doing nothing commercial for under <laughs> one to two M's. You know what I'm saying? Like you're not. No. Nah, yeah. Yeah. About that. About, yeah. Maybe about middle, a little over a mil. Yeah. yeah. You know, to get, to get into, just to get into the commercial world. Um, okay. So what else, uh, Chris? Yeah. One second. Uh, this property I bought in DC for 400k is already worth 4, 4 uh 415 after only 4.5 months crazy. Sheesh. Yeah, DC bro is 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 a is a hot area, man. Yep, and the, the thing market. is is that 
it's always going to be good because it's the nation's capital. So people are always going to be moving there and living there and everything else like that. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, I just said it was hot market. Your yeah, DC's hot yeah market. very hot market. Uh, grossly overpriced, but it is what it is. Uh, Tez J, do you buy property under LLCs? Also, Myron mentioned to avoid hard money lenders, but what are other options? Yeah, I'm going to... I bought all the properties under my name just to make shit easier, and then I'm going to uh, roll them into LLCs uh, by the end of this year. And then as far as like hard money lenders... Uh, there's other ways, bro. This is why you, having a good mortgage broker is so good because they can help you. Like right now, actually, you want, we want to tell about the deal that we were looking at earlier. <laughs> How do you want to get into It's that? It's a stupid <laughs> ass deal. But yeah. the point is, is that um, there, there was a deal. It's a duplex, right? It, they, they had it on, on the thing for $1.4 million. The real estate agent's an idiot. But the point I'm trying to make is, is that I don't have the, the I didn't have the, the all the cash to do that deal. So I was like, yo, I hit up my mortgage broker and. He basically was like, all right, listen, I found a guy. We could do a HELOC on one of your properties that's paid off because mm -hmm. I, I have one property. I have my childhood home paid off in Connecticut, guys. So um, so I was going to – and a HELOC is a home equity line of credit, which we could do a whole episode on that. But basically what happens is the, uh, I get to tap into the money that the house is worth, yeah. and it's almost like a line of credit. The through, equity. Through the, yeah, for, through yeah. the home. And I was going to use money from that to fund – this deal, but this is where you can, and then he was also talking about other strategies of like, you know, using properties that you already have as collateral or whatever, and you can start to get into these more creative, uh, you know, ways of raising money uh, once you have a mortgage broker, maybe you have some friends that can, you know, you guys can pitch in and do a deal together, but I always say stay away from hard money lenders as like, a, as the most, uh, try to stay away from them as best you can because their interest rates are outrageous. Yeah. Unless now, you really like. No, nah, hard money lenders, that's more... That's more for really advanced people. There, there's a, there's a, there's a use case for them, but like I said, for very advanced and very sophisticated investors, I, I wouldn't recommend it because here's the problem. And and usually what happens is like guys that are trying to flip, right? You're, Flippers you're, always use them. You're, yeah. you're into this whole flipping thing, and you're you only have one strategy. I'm gonna find a property, fix it up. I'm gonna flip it, and I'm gonna use hard money to do it. And then once I get done repairing it, I'll convert to conventional and then just turn around and sell it or, or whatever. But the problem with that is what if something messes you up? What if you can't sell it in time? Mm -hmm. Then you a lot of stuff comes due. So Yeah, that's a fact. Uh, all right. So what, what other question do we got here? Um, uh, I think... Uh, great information here. Very important. And must invest. By the way, Roger looks like Tommy Sotomayor. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Who's that? Uh, Thirty-one, that? and that's from uh, the, MDZ nineteen eighty-six. He does oh. like um, very realistic videos. Oh, okay. Little Danny nine hundred four. Uh, Thirty-one-year-old male just moved here to Glendale, Arizona, a month ago. I don't have a job or income, but I have five k in the bank. What do I need to do? A job, um, you bro. Need to get, get a job. You need a job, my a job bro. You need constant cash flow of some kind, which is hopefully steady, and then focus on investing. Other than that, but yeah, yeah. A bank ain't gonna give you a loan, bro. With, yeah. with uh, when you don't have a job and and five at least K, two years, at least two years too. And guys, like you need to have a little bit of a cushion. You know what I'm saying? Because here's the thing: things are gonna break when you buy a property. Yep. You're gonna need a little bit of reserves, man. That so, happens to me, bro. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to become house poor. You use all your money, buy the house, and then you can't do anything to it. Uh, MDZ 1986. Great information here. Oh no, read that one. Uh, Richard, uh, what's Fernandez. Roger's IG? It's not below. It's Roger underscore Lasad, right? Yep. Lasad, L I S S A D E. Thank yeah. you, sir. And I'm gonna put in the description, guys. I will. I will add it. I'm, I'm surprised it's not there. Um, or Trey will make it. We'll make it happen. Richard Hernandez. I make good money and want to buy an investment property, but don't have capital for a down payment. Is it good to use a personal loan for down payments, bro? If you can do an FHA loan, bro. Yeah. Yo, let me give you out a game right now. If you don't have that much capital, bro, and you guys want to get into real estate investing, FHA. just do this. FHA loan. Get a duplex, okay? And the reason why you want to get a, du a duplex, triplex, or fourplex, whatever you can afford, yeah. right? The more doors, the better. I agree with Grant Cardone. The more doors, the better, right? Because what's going to happen is you're going to be able to collect rent from multiple tenants. And when you get, you only put 3.5% down, if you do it right, your tenant or tenants will pay your mortgage down for you. You don't have to pay your mortgage, and then you could potentially make money. And then you save that money for a year. You stay in that property for a year, because if you don't, you're going to get in trouble, right? <laughs> the feds will come after you. You stay in that property for a year, and then bang, you move. You uh, you, you go ahead and uh, take put a tenant in your spot, get even more cash flow, and then bang, do that FHA loan again and move into another property. You could, that's you that's could, a foolproof plan. There's a book called Set for Life by uh, Scott. He's part of big, bigger pockets. Uh, he goes through the whole plan for you as well, from being a actual worker to invest in real estate to become coming on to that, and also as well once you go on that path, um, 
you can have cash flow coming for you from four properties. Yeah. So it's pretty dope. And and you can do that FHA thing for a couple of times. And yeah. here's the other thing. By four the times. time you do it four, four times, times. Yeah. by the time you do it like on your second or third property, you're probably going to be able to pull equity from one of your properties, right? Because remember, you live in each property for a year. Yep. That's a considerable amount of time where you built equity in that first home, right? So let's say you do it three times. By the time you get into your third home, you probably have some equity built up in the first one you bought and you have tenants paying you cash flow and you're saving money. So you pull the equity out and then you can make a full 20 to 25% down payment on an investment property if you don't want to move again. Because I know moving is annoying and a lot of people don't like doing that. And for some of you with a job, those four properties could probably cover your, your income monthly. Yeah. You'll be able to probably, like, yo, if you're making like, 50k a year whatever it is like that you'll probably be able to like quit your job bro and do this full time yeah. or just chill uh after you have like you know three or four or five properties that book so. set for life goes through the whole process for you so yeah. check it out so okay uh what do, what do we got here oh twitch we got oh, twitch shout out to our twitch season people. we have a season uh it says is gifting five tier one uh five tier one subs to fresh fit podcast community they've get the total of 286 in the channel thank you so thank much you, brother. bro Appreciate you, you are the man bro down to marco for you yeah, bro. all right Okay, Sean Muhammad, Sean Muhammad here. Five bucks. Where in Miami can I get a decent duplex? I can put 20 to 30K down, and would that be enough? Roger, take it away, Hit man. Hit it, Roger. Or an FHA loan, he says, is the second thing. It's going to be tough. Oh, that, that might be a little tough, my friend. <laughs> my friend, I'll be honest. Nope. You ain't getting shit in Miami for 20 to $30,000 down. Not Cause, anymore. Because here's the other thing, too. I want to let you all know. All the banks, you're pretty much going to have to put 25% down. After the bear bug? Yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> COVID fucked things up for now, a lot of you guys. the requirements are way higher. So. Yep. It ain't even no more. I mean, hell, y'all saw it. I, I did two deals. Clearly, they had seen how much money I like. I, they they had seen my money. I had done two clear uh, good deals with the bank, and they still they don't care. Pulled the rug from underneath me yeah. while I was in the middle, of, while I was under contract, and the banker told me, "Now we're good." Fortunately, he was able to fix it and be like, "No, no, no, we still got to at least be able to do one." But they yeah. still dropped the other deal. So yeah. this is guys. The banks are are risk. Remember, guys, banks. Yo, if you go to Bank of America right now. They will not give you a loan to buy their own goddamn stock, and that's a fact. Bam. That tells you all you need to know with the banks. They're well, in the game of not losing money. But if you want to get a car loan, they definitely will. <laughs> <laughs> Don't yeah. do it. They'll let you do a car loan, but they're going to give you money to buy lose stock in their nigga. own goddamn bank, bro. <laughs> that should tell you what you need to know. Uh, right, got- okay. Okay, Eddie Ortiz, congrats on the success, subs, and views, gents. I own two homes, live in one, and rent the other. I have enough equity in my primary to cash out and refine my but to buy my third house. That's exactly what I mentioned there earlier, you guys. Pros and cons, should I S-Corp or LLC? Ooh. S-Corp. S-Corp all the way. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, watch the episode that we had with uh, Steve. With Steve where we broke this down with, with S-Corps, and we give you guys kind of like parameters that you can LLC use. LLC versus S-Corp, what they actually mean. Yeah, what they mean, the, the parameters that you want to be in if, when you want to go into S-Corp, because Steve gave some numbers that you want to hit, and for those, those of you guys that are wondering, that's Steve from accounting, my, my accountant and Fresh's accountant. Real good dude. He's up in uh, North Florida. Guys, so, master money and investing, your life will be free. Uh, Mine, bro, if you're really looking for cash flow in real estate long term, look up the slow flip method. Okay. No, I just buy and hold, bro. I keep it nice <laughs> I, and simple. I don't know what the slow I buy and hold. Is. Chris, Christian Rosa, uh, the house I live in now was purchased for 440K and it is now worth roughly 565K about 30 months later. Yep. Yo, appreciate I'm telling you, y'all, man, Christian this Rosa real estate wedding. market is crazy, bro, right now. You know? Um. Okay, let's and see. Talk here. about generational wealth, bro. You buy property now, you save it for your kids. When they go to live in it or, 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 or sell it, they'll be good for life. Yeah. So, yo, Muhammad, so going back to what he said, because he asked, I think he said he had like between 20 and 40K to put down. You're not going to be able to get anything in Miami really with that, bro, because you're going to have to bring a decent amount of money in. But uh, what I would say is with that money, you have more than enough to do FHA loan, though. So go ahead and do an FHA loan. Get yourself into a duplex or a triplex, and uh, you'll be good. Chris Clown. Yeah. All right, Brisk Clown, uh, 50 bucks. I don't know if you've already, uh, if you have already, but have you spoken on buying slash selling land? No. No, that's not my expertise, but there is a guy I know that specializes in that. We might have him come on. Yeah. But I don't, I don't, dude, I don't buy land because unless it's going to pay me immediately after buying it, I, I'm not going to do it. I'm not expert on that at all, so I'm not going to tap Yeah, no, no, I'm not, I'm not that. Yeah, OB and Brandon in the chat. There you go. Shout out to Brandon, man. OB and Brandon. Where's he at? Right there. Bam. Oh, okay. Shout, shout out to, to you, bro. My guy, Prince. Hey, shout out to you, Brandon. Uh, uh, Peyton. Uh, 10 bucks. Paying 10 bucks. Found y'all in Cardone too late and trying to figure out how to pivot. Currently got all my assets in 401k. Oh. Max every year. Oh, shit. My heart hurts, bro. Yeah, that, that's what they want you to do, oh. my man. 
And uh, and uh, three, two home. I I live in 250k. 26 year old making 125k a year. Yeah, pull that money up, bro. Yeah, I mean, well, no, nah, he won't be able to. Pull, he'll get heavily penalized probably because the 401. Yeah, if you pull money out, it's probably gonna. If, yeah, 20. Yeah, if it's a traditional, bro, I would still take that loss and put it in real estate. Me personally, I, I mean, mean, or he could just lower his contributions now. But then he gets to 50. I mean, Peyton, you should look into it because I because I vaguely remember something where they you got him on that compound interest scam. No, 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 you could take <laughs> a, a loan on four one k and then go buy property. Yeah, or something. Talk to your HR department. Yeah, or something. You something like that you could do that. probably. Yeah. yeah, yeah, man. Uh, yeah, bro. I mean, just yo, just lower. This is what you got to do, bro. Just lower your contributions. Save some money on the side if you have. I'm I'm hoping you got like you know six months uh, saved somewhere. And then, yo, you could pull some equity out of the home that you live in, rent that bitch out, and then move somewhere, and then get an FHA loan, move into a duplex bro. or triplex, bro. Yeah, you could. Or yeah, just man. risk it, let me in. Pull equity out of that house out. and go somewhere else. Uh, MJ is junkie. Hey, nice. shout out hey, to you, bro. 20, 20, 20, 20, super chat. Yeah. Shout out to you, bro. Shout out to you, man. Congratulations on getting your properties, Myron. This content is extremely valuable. Don't sleep on this info. Most people pay a shitload for these gems FNF gives out. Facts. It's just about chasing women. It's, it's not, not just about chasing women. We got y'all, bro. bro. Helping y'all make money, man. Yo. Hey, we get everything, bro. everything, bro. Fitness, everything. girls, dating, Instagram, real estate, making Mark money, marketing, saving. I'm gonna do an episode for y'all niggas on silver. Yeah, I invested in silver too. All right, that's kind of, I don't know, bro. Uh, precious metals, man. Gold. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> yeah, nah, we, we gonna have, we're gonna bring uh, Aaron Clary. I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. but we're gonna bring Aaron no. Clary, and I did buy silver, guys. Yeah. Uh, I bought about 200 ounces. Yo, he called a Jew that. to ask about the pennies. <laughs> hey, do you have any gold, sir? Any silver? <laughs> <laughs> shout out to our guy, Aaron Clary, guys. Shout out to Aaron, man. Yeah, sh shout out to him. Copy. Uh, like uh, Mishai, $2, message deleted. Okay. Will buying my first investment property through LLC affect my chance with getting mortgage for my personal home? Five bucks. It should be uh, separate because it's a business, right? So it shouldn't affect his price. I mean, honestly... The answer to that question, it depends on your individual situation, and you can sh you should consult a lender or actually a mortgage broker to get a good answer on that. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. What do we got here? We got. I bought a, a home 10 years ago with a VA loan. Can I buy another home using VA loan and renting out my first house? Five bucks from JC. Mm. Hmm. I don't know how VA loan works. Honestly, I, I don't even know people that have bought one VA loan. I would think you can, but I would check. I, yeah. answer that, I, I don't know the answer to that question. I will double check. I, I wouldn't be surprised if they told you no, though, bro. Yeah, I never did VA, so I don't know. V After VA loans are, are pretty lit. You put no money down and get it to the house, bro. Like, <laughs> no, but, but it's similar to FHA where you only have to live in the house for the first year. And I'm thinking you probably could, but yeah, I don't know. It's a government loan, so definitely check. Like, go go on the website and check it, bro. Because yeah. you don't you don't want to mess around with government loans either. You know what I'm saying? So... Make sure, you know, you cross your T's and dot your I's. All right, these last two here. Uh, okay. Uh, your, your boy, boy Narco. Narco. Guys, can please elaborate on the 401k? I put 18% and my company matches 6%. Yeah, I mean... Bro. Bro, 401ks... I'm just going to say it, bro. 401ks are what people use to make you feel safe about the fact that you're working a job that you fucking hate, bro. You know what I'm saying? Because all of 401k is going to be... Uh, it's going to be a complimentary addition to the shitty pension that they're going to give you. You know, yeah. they're going to give you what? 50, 60% of your of your uh, of your, you know, retirement in your best 3 years. I know that's how the government typically works. Yeah. And then you have your and then you have your 401k. But most companies don't get pension anymore. So that'll, that'll be your pension right there if you live that long. If yeah, bro. So <laughs> like, like I mean, here's the thing, man. I'm yeah. not going to tell you guys to like say like what to do whatever. Obviously, you know, this is not financial advice. You do what yeah. you want to do, but just understand that you <laughs> Compound interest, which is what 401ks are sold on, is is kind of like a, a fleeting uh, dream. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. what you can do is take that money real time, put it into an asset, and make the money work for you real time so you can actually enjoy the benefits of it right fucking now, not 30 years from now. Because you know what's happening? Wall Street's taking that money Facts. and doing that, what he just said, on your money, and you're getting a small percentage of what you're doing with your money. So they're financing oh, you oh, all day long. You're like, yeah, I'm making money with my 401k. They're making a bank load on your money yeah. for free. Facts. You know what I'm saying? So they're basically taking your money, yep. putting it in the market, and letting it work for them. Why do you think you get penalized so bad they when you pull out early? Wall Street. You know what I'm saying? Because they're using the money. They're like, nah, nigga, I know it's your money, but we're using it. <laughs> so <laughs> that that's just how it goes, man. Yep. So, I mean, there's nothing wrong with having that safety net, bro. But drop your contribution rate and invest in things that pay you back money now, bro. Yeah. 
You know what I'm saying? Silver Spy. Uh, Silver Spy. FHA has a four unit limit, but does it have a maximum number of tenants limit? Like in NY, you, you can uh, lease out individual bedrooms in a shared roommate style apartment, but counts as a single unit and more profits. Okay, Roger, your your uh, yeah, I don't know, your brother's in New York. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm from New York, but I've been in, you know I've been in New York since 2004. Lived in New York since 2004. So the answer to that question is. You need to be aware of your maximum occupancy um, limits on a property, and you also need to look up the local laws yeah. to make sure. Because like, like you by can't now. just put an infinite amount of people, especially in your property. with the beer bug stuff, bro. Yeah. I guarantee you, there's some kind of law, ordinance, or some bullshit that limits that your ability to do Six that. Six feet apart. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. New York too, woke ass state. Yeah, man. I mean, yo. I'll tell you guys this, bro. Sometimes it's not worth it, man. Like, to make a little bit of extra bucks, but, like, put yourself in a compromising position where you can get in trouble or fines or whatever the hell. It, sometimes it's not worth it, bro. Especially in a state like New York where you know they're going to destroy you if they find out. You know what I'm saying? Because it's super liberal and, you know, they're, they're just... New York still has restrictions on COVID, bro. Like, like yo. <laughs> yeah, it's a clown world up nope, there. So just be careful, bro. No, we're not good. Good stuff as usual, guys. Keep up the good work. Are we going to show up with some girls right now, guys? So tune in for that. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, guys. Go follow yo, Roger. Roger, uh, yep. where the people find you? Roger underscore Lasad on IG. Hit yeah. me up if you have any questions. There you go. And Dorkett also posted as well. Yeah. All right, guys. We'll be right back uh, with a late night show. We'll catch you guys in a little bit. We'll probably go live here in about 30 minutes. Peace. All right, guys. Peace.